Some decades ago, sociologists noticed that society is changing in an exponential way and they started warning about it, but it's just been in the past decade or so that this change has uh, become so rapid that I think it's taxing our ability to adapt to it. It's coming from globalization, it's coming from the rise of the internet and social media and all sorts of applications. And uh, as a result of that, uh, society is changing faster than ever before. So these are uh, some graphs that show you what's typical of social media change today. Uh, the total number of websites here doubles about every 18 months. Total number of text messages doubles every 30 months. So the characteristic doubling is happening in months now and not decades. This is a result of that. Uh, cyber attacks we have to deal with, uh, crazy politics, uh, phishing, globalization. Uh, there's uh, social change, some of which is good, uh, that's happening much faster than before. Uh, companies have to deal with challenges like taxi companies, for instance, have to deal with a, a whole new way of, of, of arranging rides that Uber represents. And in all different industries, we have similar challenges. And if you don't keep up with those challenges, you go the way of some of these companies, uh, Kodak, Encyclopedia Britannica, Blockbuster. These are all companies that didn't perceive or recognize or appreciate the change or accept the change or react to the change. And that's what happens to them. But that also happens to you in your personal life if, if you don't adapt. You can get bowled over and left behind. So what is elastic thinking and how does that help? Human thinking or biological information processing in general can be put on a spectrum. At one end is analytical thinking. Analytical thinking is rule-based thinking where you start with a premise and you use the rules of reasoning or logic to get from A to B to C. So the whole thing is kind of set up with you, for you, and you're using reasoning to get to your answer. What is usually taught in schools and is valued highly in companies, it's what they test on the college entrance exams, and, and it's a very powerful way of thinking. At the other end of the spectrum is elastic thinking. Elastic thinking is not the kind of thinking that's based on rules, it's the thinking that creates the rules. It's the thinking that breaks the rules and puts in new rules, and it's the kind of thinking that even uh, examines what the rules are, what the assumptions and the rules that you're following are, because quite often what you're following, you have hidden assumptions and implicit assumptions, implicit rules that you're not even aware that you're following, and it's not until you understand what those are that you can move forward. So I'll give you a few, just, uh, we don't have a lot of time, but I'll give you three characteristics of elastic thinking. Uh, one is it's about reframing questions, the importance of the framework in which the question is even asked. My rabbi uh, uh, gave a sermon where he said he, Jews like to talk, and they talk in the synagogue. And he said in his sermon, he said, you know, uh, if you came up to me and said, uh, I'm going to come to the synagogue today, do you mind if we talk through the whole service? I'd say, of course I mind. This is a house of prayer. You should be respectful and pay attention. But then he said, if you come up to me and said, hey, my friends and I are going to come, or thinking of coming to the synagogue, but we talk a lot, do you mind if we come anyway? He would say, sure, everyone's welcome. I wouldn't keep you out. So the answer that you get is based on the way you frame the question. The way you set up the problem often guides you toward the way you solve the problem. And in science, at an even deeper level that we won't talk about today, the framework in which you view the theory it tells you how you interpret the world. So that's a very important aspect of thinking. And elastic thinking helps you examine what your framework is and realize how you might change it. Uh, another characteristic of elastic thinking is the questioning of assumptions. Sometimes what's standing in the way of you understanding a solution in your, for your life or for your business or in science is the assumptions that you're making that you might not even be aware of, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, Marcia and Marjorie were born on the same day of the same month, the same year, same mother and father, but they're not twins. How is that possible? Well, the answer is, is a, is a, it can be obtained through very trivial logical reasoning once you realize uh, what your assumptions are that are that's blocking you from, from doing that. And most riddles are like that. Most riddles are based on guiding your mind toward making an implicit assumption, some, an assumption you're not aware of, that, that, that uh, precludes you from coming to the answer. And once you question that and realize that, that you might relax, that you should relax that assumption, then getting the answer is easy. So in this case, the answer is they're triplets. But people have a hard time seeing that, or it takes a while to see that, because when I say Marsha and Marjorie, you picture two girls or two women in your mind. That picture of two is an implicit assumption and stops you from seeing three. Once you realize there is, you know, that they could be N, then you go, well, 
why would they be twins? They could be triplets, quadruplets, or anything else. So it's the questioning, again, of, of assumptions that you have to make and sometimes in order to get to your answer. And the third uh, aspect I'll talk about is uh, idea generation, imagination. So your mind uh, is an idea machine. It's constantly generating ideas. And some are good and some are bad. They come from your unconscious. And most of them don't get to your conscious mind. And that's a good thing because if they did, you would drown in these crazy ideas. But the thing is that not, some of the ideas aren't crazy, they're just different. And th these filters in your brain that are keeping the crazy ideas from your, coming to you can also keep uh, good but different ideas from coming to you. And so a lot of elastic thinking is about how you relax those filters and let those other ideas come through. This is an example that uh, scientists use sometimes to study that. They give you three words and they ask you to generate a fourth word that will go with each of these. The same fourth word will go with every one of these three words. There's two ways that you can come up with that, uh, with the answer. One way is to find a word that goes with one of them and then check if it goes with the second one or the third one and so on and just keep doing that systematically. But a way that they find is more successful is to just relax and open your mind and try and calm yourself and then the word just pops into your mind like magic. That's called insight versus the logical reasoning. So one is elastic and one is, is not elastic. In this case, the answer is, sorry, apple. Crab, apple, pineapple, and applesauce.